was the preparedness that they had was they were too comfortable. They were complacent. They did not prepare. The, 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 the entertainment of life had them bound and not paying attention to the signs of the times. And you see, when I was praying and asking God yesterday, I was asking the Lord. I prayed and I said, Lord, I said, I know that maybe I'm living in the, in the times where I'll see the coming of the Son of Man and all his glory. And, and, and I don't know why, but I just believe that we are together as Christians and as the elect of God are living in a time where the Son of Man is going to return. Nobody knows the day of the hour. I can't predict that. I'm not a Nostradamus type of fella. You know what I mean? I'm a preacher. God has set me here, and the warnings that he gives me in my spirit, guess who I give it to? I give it to you. And right now what I'm telling you is that there's many people that are worried about a virus called coronavirus. Right? I don't know if anybody has taken the time to understand what corona means in Spanish. You know what corona means in Spanish? It means crown. You see, and the world doesn't see the signs that God has given us. The elite caught it real quick. They changed the name from Corona, and they named it COVID-19. Because the people of God are saying, we can't name it Corona, because they'll associate this with the signs of the times and the return of Jesus Christ, and we don't want that from the people. We don't want them to know that when we have endured the trials and the temptations of this life, that we receive the crown of life to those that God has prepared for us. If the elites are watching this video right now and they come looking at my door and they want to take my head first above all, they can have it. Because I have come here to preach that Jesus Christ and his return is imminent and it's near. And when the people of God keep running from the corona a crown of life that God has for us. If people of God keep running from the corona, the crown of life that Jesus Christ has for us, like it's the real virus. I don't want that. I'm not going to church. I don't want the crown of life. I don't want the corona virus. And that's how the people and the elect of God see the Lord. I don't want to change. I want to continue in my sin. I want to continue in my lust and the, and the pleasures of this world. I want to continue to live like the heathen. I want to continue to live like the world does. They're comfortable. They're real comfortable. All of a sudden, they're taking even the most simplest. God is taking even the most simplest of, of, of comforts, which is toilet paper. The most simplest of comforts. Think about this. Just think about this. The most simplest of comforts that this world has to enjoy. And what is the first thing that flies off the shelves? It's toilet paper. And what do you associate toilet paper with? Doo-doo. <laughs> am I right or am I wrong? It's waste that comes from the human body. That's what it is. And, and people are associating this, this virus that's come in. And they're, they're, they try to compare it, oh, this is like another 9-11. The only difference between the 9-11 and this virus is that you don't see nobody flocking to the churches and try to seek God. You're not seeing that. That's the difference between this virus and 9-11. What you're seeing right now in the land is people looking for things that are of comfort. I need water. I need toilet paper. I need food. I need meat. I need bread. Huh? But I don't need Jesus. I don't want the corona. I don't want the crown of life prepared for those that God loves. Huh? And you can feel the spirit of anxiety and panic even among the brethren. Social media is a wicked tool, I can tell you that. But social media at a time like this also provides great information for us that war against the enemy. I'll tell you that right now. And I tell you, if you cannot handle it and if you get caught up in the panic and in the vibes of, oh, the world is just in turmoil, I'm going to go live like a heathen, stay off of it. Because what's going to happen if they turn off all the lights and the electricity and what's going to happen if they turn off the Internet? Huh? How many of y'all talked to y'all's neighbors recently and told them about Jesus? How many of y'all know who's living next to you? Because you're a witch living next to you. 
Huh? Every night you hear some kind of chants and all kinds of praises to the enemy, and you think it's the TV and they're having a little seance in the back. How many of y'all have gone out and talked to your neighbor for real and said, oh, who lives next door to me? Have you devised a plan with your brothers and sisters and say, if turmoil comes and if something comes, do we have a plan set up where we can meet and gather together and be ready to move just in case? We're living in those times. We are living in the times where Jesus Christ is going to send back so much tribulation and trials and people are going to be pressed. Even the elect of God will be pressed even more those that ain't saved. And people are falling back. People are going to the back of the line. I don't want Jesus right now. I don't want that right now. I don't want to go to church right now because my favorite band, not Kanye West, ain't going to be there. So I ain't going to go to the church right now. Where do you go to see Kanye West? Or you go to learn about Jesus Christ. You go learn about the Son of God. Do y'all know who's gonna come back in all His glory? Do you know who you're waiting for while you really serve? Do you know who you really while you you really serve because your hope is that one day, that as the lightning strikes, that you're gonna be joined together with Christ if you're still alive, and if you're asleep, you're gonna be raised up with Him and be caught up in the air. Huh? Oh, but the people of God will be taken care of on every side. All sides. God is not a man that he should lie. I'll tell you right now, I, I, I was looking at the scriptures, and, and, and people need to stop already. The brethren need to stop already and, and, and focus and pay attention. And don't worry about how much you got in your bank account. Don't worry about if, if your show's coming out tonight. Huh? Don't worry about it. if you're going to be able to meet a triple meat with cheese and bacon and jalapenos and another mushroom, mashed potatoes and all kinds of stuff stacked on top of it. Stacked and stacked and stacked. What you have to be thinking about and prayerful about is that the time where you're sitting in front of that TV or eating that burger or whatever desire that you have that is not of God, that the coming of the Son of Man doesn't come when you're doing it. You will be left, I ain't going to say left behind, but you'll be cast into outer darkness, and you will be judged by God. I heard a man tell me that they're teaching in his church. Let me tell you something, how much you guys are blessed to be here. There's a guy that I talked to, he said in his church, they teach him that to repent, it means to be repetitive. To, to repetitive, thank you. To be repetitive. So, in other words, he can sin all he wants because he's been taught that if he repents, it's repetitive. He can always repent from the same thing over and over and over again. And we know that the Lord says even when he healed people, go and sin no more. Don't go. That's it. You're done. Are we ready for the real crown? The crown of life that God has prepared for those that love him? What are we doing? What are we sitting back? What is our hope in? What do we really have in our hearts right now? It's good to be wise. It's always good to be wise in a step and at least 20 steps ahead of the enemy. Just as David was many times. He was many times a steps ahead of the enemy. You know, as I continue to read the word of God, I was amazed because Jesus said in 25 and 26, behold. Behold, hey, I'm telling you though right now that when the times get worse, this ain't nothing what you see. This ain't nothing. This, ain't, this is not nothing. When you see them start coming after the children of God and hating us because we love Christ, guess what? Get ready. Because it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse and the, the love of many will wax cold. It's going to wax so cold, they're going to wonder how are they being able to overcome the coronavirus? How are they able to have food in the refrigerator and we don't? You're going to have them like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. When, uh, Gomorrah, did I say it right? Um, Gomorrah. You're going to have them like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah when those, when those angels went into the city and the people tried to get in the door. huh? That's the way that the times that we're going to, that's working. even Jesus said, in the last days, 
The days will be as in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. You're going to have them knocking on your door because you got a deep freezer full of meat. And they wonder how you got it. God gave it to you. He provided because he's going to provide for his children. He's going to continue to provide for his children. But you got to be in tune with him. It's like a car. If you never give it a tune up. If you never put gas in it, if you never change the oil, what happens to it? It starts to break down little by little. If you don't put no gas, you ain't going nowhere. If you don't put no Holy Ghost inside of you, you're not going nowhere. If you're not putting the word of God and the food that God gives you, the bread of life inside of you, you're going to be malnourished. You're going to be more flaquito than me, way more. More skinnier than me because you're, 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 you're malnourishing your spirit. And this is at a time when we know that Jesus says, prepare. Because the signs of the times that we're seeing, they are coming. It's now time. It's now time. Things are going in reverse so bad that it is amazing the things that we are seeing in the world. Today, an earthquake in Utah, so severe, felt it in California. And the power outage is everywhere. This ain't nothing. This is nothing. What you going to do when you feel that earthquake? You're going to knock your crown off and live like the heathen to go looting because you're desperate to go get toilet paper and water and milk. That's what you're doing. That's what the world, even the Christians are doing it. Those that call themselves Christians, but are they really the elect? The elect of God. Are we the elect? Are, are you going to be one of the elect? It's now time, I'm telling you, people. It's, now, it's time for us to rise up. This sermon is not to put fear in your heart. What I'm doing right now is I'm giving you a shield. I'm giving you a helmet. I'm giving you the breastplate and the sheet to shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's what I'm giving you. I'm helping you to put on your whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand all the wiles of the wicked one. And having done all in the end, guess what? To stand. We have to stand against the wilds of the enemy in every area of our lives. Oh, the enemy is ready to lie to us and to tell us all kinds of lies about everybody. Oh, Bishop, sick. I ain't going back. That's wicked. That man wants to come in here and preach right now. But he's been put on restraint. And it's not by self-will, because believe me, he'll be right here standing, not because he wants to make himself known, not because he wants everybody to say, look at me, or because he thinks he's a goat, the greatest of all time. No, because he loves God, and he knows that God will continue to use him as long as his body allows him to be used. And that's what preparedness is. Because we might have to be at a time where we say, okay, is my body ready to be used at all hours? And that's why fasting is important. Sacrifice it. Man, stop eating so much. Let's fast it. Fast it for a day. Fast it for two times a week. Huh? Give, give up soda. Give up water. And re man, just replenish your whole body. I'm telling you, I'm not here to preach about fasting. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ said in his word. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shining even unto the west, so shall, uh, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. See, people can't, I don't care how many books they write of the coming of the Son of Man, of prophecy and all that. They'll never be able to predict it. Never. Because only God knows the day or the hour. Only God knows the time, the minute, the second when he's going to say, Jesus, go get your beloved. Go get my children. Huh? Whoa. Man, can you just think about that day? My thread sword is going to melt off when I go up there to see Jesus. And my hair is going to turn all white like Moses when he came down off the mountain. He was disfigured and they saw him and said, "Woo!" They couldn't even look upon him. He was so, man, he was just so filled with the Holy Ghost. That's who you're going to be. That's where you're going to find yourself in this position. Even now, if you continue to serve God and find your power in the scriptures and in prayer and trusting that God will do it, People are going to look at you and know that's one of the Lord's. That's one of the Lord's anointed. They'll call on you for prayer. And I'm going through something. I think I caught that virus. Come on, let's pray, man. Yeah, yeah. Let's pray, man. Let's pray. Let's pray this thing out of you. Let's cast it out. Let's cast these demons out. When, when, when Jesus was here and he had his disciples with him, they were casting out diseases and demons like crazy. 
And now the children of God and the elect of God see a demon and whoa, either want to become friends with him or they want to, or they want to run from him. I ain't putting my hand on that dude. I don't know, man. He, he's over there uh, transfiguring to looking like a spider and stuff. No, you got to be ready and you got to say, you know what? I know that what I'm looking at today is nothing compared to the things that I got to face in the future. Look, guys, you got to be ready. The word of God is preparing us and we have to be ready. You might not. You might see some things that are nasty. That's why it talks about right here in 28. Wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Where you see destruction, where you see death, where you see stuff that, wow, you've never seen in your life, you're going to see this stuff. Wherever you see stuff like that, guess what? You got to be aware and you got to say, okay, the eagles gathered together. What, is it? What, is it? what does the word of God say about eagles? They'll spread their wings like eagles, right, and fly. So eagles going to be a good thing in the word of God. You know what I'm saying? So if the eagles are spread where the carcass are, that means that no death will be able to overcome anybody that is a son of or children of God. What are we doing? What are we doing? We don't want the corona, the real crown of life, the crown of life, able to save everybody. Oh, man. And the word of God tells us immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Whoa, we're talking about some cosmic stuff here now. We're talking about some Jetson stuff here now, right? Oh, man, the sun's going to be moved, the stars are going to fall, the worlds are going to move out of their place. Even the world might even move a little bit. And then we're going to know that even those times when things get darkened and the whole world just goes into collapse, that at that time we better say, you know what, I'm ready. And the word of God says in 30, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth born, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with, with it of heaven with power and great glory. Russia's going to freak out. China's going to freak out. North Korea's going to say, oh, here he comes, the king of glory. And then they will know that the king of glory is taking this position because they're getting ready to get slayed. And we're going to do the God's, we're going to do the Lord's work because the first one he's going to pick up, he ain't going to leave you behind, man. You don't even need a ticket. You don't even need a, 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 a bus pass. You know what he's going to look for? He's going to look for the sheep and not the goat. He's going to look for those that were faithful and righteous in all things in life pertaining to him and his word and how you lived your life. And then you're going to have the goats, those that run with pride. The great, I call them the greatest of all time. That's what they call them now, right? Greatest of all time. I don't want to be a goat. They used to call me a goat at AutoZone until I read the word of God. And I said, nah, don't be calling me that. I don't want to be a goat. I want to be a sheep because a sheep is humble and a goat is full of pride and they think they're it. Oh, no, because the goats are going to fire itself in everlasting darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. This world is not prepared for the calamities that the Lord is getting ready to bring upon it. And the children of God need to be prepared. We need to be ready. How many of y'all reading y'all's word every day? Mustard, you read your word every day, Mustard. You pray every day, huh? All right, well, he's little young. You he don't understand what I'm saying, but all right. You want to read with him every day. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you all right now, for real, this, this, the, 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 this coronavirus that's, that's sweeping the land is just a beginning of many sorrows. It's the beginning of, of things that we can't even imagine. Because you imagine after the, the, the beginning of sorrows comes the persecution of mankind, then the signs in heaven and the earth beneath. When all the, and then they try to make stuff up and say, oh, look, this is happening here. See, people are already looking for that stuff. But the thing is, they're not looking for it to give glory to God. And the children of God are all relaxed looking for the big screen. The children of God are all relaxed looking for the, the movie theaters, the plays, Left Behind series, the stand. They're looking for stuff that God is, is like, you know, you're believing in fairy tales, but you can't sit three hours and read my Bible? You can't sit three hours so that I can tell you that there's something coming heavy on the land right now. And you're not ready. You're not preparing the kids. The armor's not strapped on and everybody's just falling back. Everybody's falling back. 
But you know what? The Lord's going to show you who's really his and who's really not. Didn't we hear that word from the beginning when the first part of the year began? It said, you know what? The Lord's going to start separating some of those out. And we have seen a lot of people fall back. We have seen a lot of people fall back. Imagine even now that this gets worse and worse and free money's getting ready to come in. And they're starting, people are going to be able to, uh, uh, how you call it when you just sit at home and they're on the couch? I don't know. I'm going to do it. I don't know the name of it. What you call it? Freeload? Freeload and, and walk in the, in the Jordan Chanclas and play Xbox all day. Don't got to work. Roll through the grocery store with three carts. Roll through the grocery store with three carts. And you ain't worked a day in your life. You ain't sweated. You ain't, you ain't uh, hit a thumb on a, on a tool or nothing. Oh, but they're going to be there, though. And you're going to know those that are the Lord's and those who are not. Let me tell you something. This virus is strong. Ain't no doubt about that. It is. Use wisdom. All right. But one thing that when the enemy begins to tell you about this virus and the strength of it or whatever, think about the name of it. Corona. And think about it. Corona. Think about the crown of life that the Lord has prepared for those that love him. The world don't see it, though. And they don't want to tell you about that. I'll tell you right now, people. Man, I don't know about any of y'all, man. When the Lord comes back. And he comes back with all his glory. Ain't nothing else going to matter anymore. Ain't nothing else going to matter no more. I ain't even going to turn around and look back because I don't want to become a pillar of salt. Huh? I'm not even going to turn around and look back. I'm going to shout and I'm going to act. I'm going to just raise my hand and be like, ah. I'm going to jump at the same time he's coming. I don't care if I jump that high, Brother Foger. I don't care if I jump that high. If I got to get on top of a chair just to get some lift, I'll do it. I say, oh, he'll catch me right when I'm in the air. Because that's what he says. That's what we're going to be caught up in the air. And we're going to go with Jesus. And I'll tell you what, the nations are going to mourn. They're going to be like, oh, we were, we were sinning so much. Can we repent now? Nope. Nope, you can't repent now. You can't mourn all you want, Papa. All those Buddhas you worshipped. All those allies you called on.